Hello everyone, I'm Forrest McFreelava and this is Speedplay Papal Italy number 12. We left off at war with the British and the Portuguese. We are fabricating a claim against the uh, Greeks who will hopefully also bring the Montenegrins to war against us. We're going to continue just getting various technologies. We're really, we've already gotten all the major ones. We are really just at a point where we may as well be acting as though we are in peace because for all intents and purposes we are. Jingoism seems to be very uh, far and few between with our people more or less leaving us without really any support for adding war goals. Which means that countries like Great Britain are going to find themselves just kind of being occupied. We're dealing with rebellions just throughout. We do have gas attack which is essentially the ultimate factor meaning that we no longer have to worry about uh, really our people and any sort of uprisings they may launch. Uh, we still can't be fascist however we are reactionary as that will allow us to build a few new factories and get tanks as we now have technology to get tanks and that's pretty great news. So we'll build tank and automobile factories as well as a few aircraft factories which we'll be able to unlock at 1914 uh, from there, we will wait around a year and then build just a slew of tanks, which will hopefully be able to make our armies just a bit better. We also managed to complete four of our armies in Africa, as well as get rid of a few undermanned regiments, which we'll go ahead and rebuild. At this point, we're starting to fall a bit behind in a lot of ways. Primarily, uh, a lot of our armies are no longer at 30,000 men each, and we are starting to fall behind the amount of regiments we can actually hypothetically recruit. Now, the reason for that is mainly just my own laziness. Uh, it's quite a bit my fault as I've been recording this one a bit late in the evening. Uh, we do manage to get the annex Casus Belli on Greece, so we go ahead and send our armies to occupy every single province of theirs. Montenegro also joined. We get model, model Colony and a Communist Revolutionary attempt at the same time. Luckily we do have gas attacks, so even though they control massive swaths of Africa, it doesn't really matter all that much as we'll just gas attack them out of existence. I also, while looking at all the rebellions in North Africa, realize we have a lot of troops that just for whatever reason didn't go to merge in Tunis which uh, is kind of bittersweet. On the bright side, we do have all those troops and we can just manually send them. On the downside, that kind of explains why it took so long for our army to be built. Uh, at any rate, it's kind of like finding a little bit of extra money in the glove box when your car broke down, because eh, it's not really a great thing that we found them due to the rebellions, but it is kind of nice that we have it now. <laughs> at any rate, we um, are in a pretty good spot uh, infrastructure wise we have one last tech for uh, railroads limited access roads that we'll be able to get at, a, at I believe 1919 until then there's not really any uh, fuss about it we are attacked by a massive British force so we go ahead and pick up another army to reinforce unfortunately our Irish group did not have a general when we do have a general we're able to beat them and very sadly the British do have defense against gas attack Luckily, they gave us defense against gas attack as well before uh, anything really terrible did end up happening. Now, uh, we are inadvertently justifying a war against France. We are able to justify a war against Spain. However, I'd already begun the war process against the French and kind of neglected that. At any rate, we only have one war left against the Spanish that we absolutely need to fight. So I'm not too very concerned about that. Um, let's take a look. We do manage to get a Casus Belli against France to liberate people. We're just going to go ahead and liberate India, although they only have a single province in India. There is an interesting thing we can do, and the French do attack us. However, they uh, don't appear to have gas attack or defense against gas attack at any rate. So we are doing fairly well. Or maybe they did, and I just misread it. At any rate, we do go ahead and give India their territory back and we march our armies into into the border with Spain so that we can just overwhelm the Spanish when it comes. Now, an interesting thing to note is we've still not gotten any uh, jingoism events this session, which is quite an absurd amount of time. 
So with that in mind, we're going to just go ahead and accept the peace deal of the British. Hopefully we'll get something that will justify a war against them in the near future, and we won't have to wait the five years for a truce. However, we will have to reoccupy their home islands. So, admittedly, we could probably have waited. However, at this point, I don't really see it as all that different. We also go ahead and begin to build 20 groups of tanks and just march our one army that was in the British Isles back to our countryside. There is the attempt at a crisis, which goes through immediately, so quickly that I didn't even notice who or what actually changed hands. So it probably wasn't that important anyway. We do, however, now get a jingoism event. We could have waited the British out, and probably should have. However, I was more eager to get a truce with them. At any rate, we'll go ahead and just add a few war goals against the Portuguese, and annex Montenegro as well as Greece. So even if we didn't fully clean out British North Africa, or just British, A British Africa in general, this does buy us a rare moment of peace, and we are able to create a slew of new states in Africa. So that is kind of nice. We continue to just hold constant elections, although we are at a rare moment of peace. Our war justification is complete against the Spanish, so we can declare war, and we just send all of our armies just into Spain. It is just a massive slew of assaults, which has been really just the manner of invading countries for the last several wars. And interestingly enough, we discover in doing that, that exiled troops, when they cross into hostile territory, stop being exiled. That is notably different than in EU4, where exiled troops stay exiled until they go to your own territory. Now that is very noteworthy because it means once we peace out with the Spanish, we can just rove these armies through, say, France, and cross from France into the United Kingdom without having military access through France. At any rate, we add the war goal to uh, liberate the country of the Philippines from the Spanish, uh, not for any real reason, simply because it was cheap enough to do and they wouldn't give us any more of their mainland provinces. We can now directly transfer armies from Africa to Europe and vice versa, and we're going to just go ahead and send all of these armies into the French countryside as exiles. We're probably not going to actually occupy the great British state with these armies, as that would be a little gamey, but maybe go after Denmark and take their single territory in North Africa with all those troops. That, I would argue, is, you know, mid-level gamey, but not so very gamey. I admittedly, at that point, we're basically just saying that, yeah, we're going to be kind of cheesing to win a war. So, yeah, I, admittedly, that is just kind of the plan in a general sense. Is it great? No. We will have our truce end with the French slightly before our truce with the British, so if we don't get any Cassus Bellies between now and that point, we can just declare another war against the French and move our armies into them legitimately. Now, why the French would force us to declare war against them as opposed to just giving us military access this time around, I'm not really sure. At any rate, we declare war on the Ottomans to start roving our troops into their lands. We send half of our navy to just blockade the Dardandels, which is a word that I will never get tired of saying. Dardandels? Probably mispronouncing it, but it just sounds too fun. At any rate, our armies just steamroll through Europe. We take quite a few casualties in a major battle. Ultimately, they don't have gas defense. I believe the French actually may have, and it was the Ottomans who notably didn't. At any rate, the Ottomans notably do not have gas defense, or defense against gas attack, whatever you want to call it. And we're able to just steamroll through their armies with really just a profound amount of ease. Profound, apparently, a word that I just love to use even when it doesn't quite fit the context. At any rate, our armies just steamroll through. We're really not going to have any challenges from this point onward. And there was only one or two decisive battles in the entire war. And even those, we could have just brought in reinforcements until we won them. Although at some point it would have cost just an absurd amount of lives if it was going so terribly poorly. Realistically, there are only two states left in the world that could pose a uh, threat to us, and those are going to be the Russian Empire and America. The British Empire, yeah, it is kind of threatening. However, I would argue that really we've proven in the last few wars time and time again that the British are a bit of a paper tiger when it comes to their military capabilities. 
Now we are number two in industry again, which is slightly worrying. Now that's just because America is a titan of industry and all of these wars and occupations and revolutions in Europe have done nothing but strengthen them. So who knows? Maybe we will one day control the Mediterranean and have to fight the country that controls the North American continent. And also Russia, which just is Russia, and that kind of says enough about them. Who really is to say? At any rate, we've occupied all of the Ottomans, and we can now carry our troops over to the Egyptians. We still haven't gotten any jingoism, however, we can declare war on them right now. We we'll also fabricated claim against the Danes for that uh, war for their one colony. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. We'll be back.